What's going on guys, time here and today I review the Sigma 17-50 f2.8 EXDC HSM from my Sony Alpha 65 from pro1digital.co.nz Inside the package you'll get the lens itself with the Sigma lens cap which is 77mm and you also get a nice carrying pouch with the Sigma EX logo at the back here you have a nice strap for the belt Inside the carrying bag, you'll get a nice padding along the sides and also a nice padding on the top and bottom. And you will also get a JWIT Sigma International Warranty if you bought it from pro1digital.co.nz. And you will also get a nice lens hood to go with the lens as well. Now taking a look around the lens itself, here we have the indicator 17-50 f2.8 and the barrel does extend when you zoom in and out. And when you zoom all the way out and zooming back in, the barrel doesn't fall down by its own weight, so that's very good news. Now taking a look at the side, we have the auto and manual focus switch. When it is in auto focus, you can't adjust the ring, but when you're in manual focus, you can adjust the ring very easily. And when you're using Nikon or Canon mount, there will be another button called the optical stabilizer, but for Sony Alpha cameras, it's already built in the body. And on the top, you have a nice lock button, so you can lock it at 17mm while traveling so the barrel won't extend, but unfortunately, you can't lock it at the other focal length. At the top of the lens, you have a very short focus ring, but that's good if you want to quickly focus on things, but it's not really that precise. And you also get the white dot indicator for the lens hood. At the front here, we have a very beautiful glass element, the Sigma Zoom 17-50 f2.8. This is a 77mm thread, and this lens is made in Japan. Taking a look at the lens hood, it is made from plastic, but it's very well built. Sigma logo, the in indicator, and also the white dot if you want to reverse it. So to put it on, basically just align the white dot on the top of the lens with the in indicator, and then simply slide it to the Sigma logo. And as you can see right here, it does extend a little bit, so it will protect the front of the lens and also protect the lens from glare. And when you want to put it away, traveling around, basically just align it with the white dot itself, and then slide it to the inside. Now let's test out the focus speed of the lens. Here we have the lens cap on. As you can tell, it focused really fast and quiet because of the HSM, which is hypersonic motor built in the lens itself. Focus really fast on the lens cap and the lens hood, and I'll just focus something far away, very quick, very fast, and takes very nice images. So now let's take a look at some of the photos shot with this lens. I'm using the Sony Alpha 65 on my Cambodia trip about five days. So as you can see right here, this is shot wide open at f2.8 at 50 millimeter. Very nice shallow depth of field right here. And look at this building right here at the top, you can see some more, but when you zoom all the way out, I can't really notice that. So that's happened to all lenses anyway, so you can't really notice that. And as you can see right here, this is at 17 millimeter wide open shot at f5.6 ISO 100. And when you upgrade from a kit lens, which is 18 to 55, 17 millimeter is quite a lot when you go to wide angle. One millimeter from 17 to 18 means a lot when you go wide. So very nice wide shot right here. This is shot at f2.8, very nice shallow depth of field at the back. If you want to see the full res image, the link will be in the description below. And as you can see right here, this is very nice once again, shallow depth of field, 8, 2.8, uh, ISO 100, very sharp all the way through, except for the side right there, very nice. But okay, at the top here, you can see some glare from the sunlight, not really that much at all. You can see just some purple circle right here, which is really nice. They did take a lot of glare out. So this is shot at f9, pretty much everything is in focus, very nice building right here, very nice temple. You see some color fringing along the side, but you have to zoom all the way in to see that. So when you zoom right out, you can't really notice that. And very nice shot right here, very beautiful, I'll just go through them all. This is shot at f2.8, 50mm, zoom all the way in, as you can see, very nice shallow depth of field, only in focus on the top right here, let it load for a second. And nothing is in focus right here, very beautiful. And let's go to the next image right here. And this is shot at 17mm f2.8 wide open. Very nice shallow depth of field once again. Focus on this rock right here. And this one is very good when you have a fast lens like f2.8 lenses. You can go all the way up to 1 over 1000 seconds. So you can freeze the motion right here. This butterfly is flying very fast. So I can freeze that motion which is really awesome. So you can use it for sports. You can use it for outdoors because it's wide enough. And when you use it in a crop sensor, which this lens is only compatible with a crop sensor, you can get about 24 to 70 millimeter. So it's kind of like these 24, 70 millimeter f2.8 from Canon L lens. But the quality of this is just amazing for the price. So oh, as you can see right here, this is it's a beautiful, beautiful, sharp image of this silver leaf, which is pretty awesome. Go to the next one, as you can see, it's shot wide open at 17mm ISO 100, very sharp. And this one is also shot wide open at 17mm, you can see how wide this thing really gets. 
and this one is untouched, unedited, it's very sharp, I'm focusing on the spider web right here, very nice shallow depth of field on the side, and at the back you can't really see the temple. And as you can see right here, this is shot wide open once again, show you the nice blurry effect at the back, shot at ISO 100. And here, same building, very cool, very awesome, 22mm. And this one is a nice shallow depth of field of this bug right here on the hand, which is pretty awesome. You can't really get that with the kit lens because you can zoom all the way in, you get 5.6, but this one is constant aperture f2.8, so it's very nice to have the lens. And here's a low light shot at ISO 150mm f16. And as you can see, very nice sunlight right there, very nice silhouette, very cool. Uh, there's some guy right there. Anyways, going to the next picture, very nice sunset, nice glare. There's no glare, anything, just a very beautiful image from this lens. And I'll just show you some vintaging on the side, this shot at f2.8. You see some darkness along the side right here, but if you go up to f8, you can't really see it anymore. But you can also fix this in post as well if you want to do so. And just one more sunset, very nice. Uh, sharp images shot at ISO 250 and going to the next image very sharp all the way through shot at f7.1 Very nice picture right here. Very nice beautiful place at Cambodia And this one is a nice night shot right here at f2.8 You see a nice shallow depth of field and also very sharp along the image along the glass right here And there's some glare, but that's because of the lights and last but not least, this is shot at f22, 30 seconds, so I just put the camera on the table and you can see a very beautiful light right here, very strobes light and also some pokeballs, which is pretty awesome. So the question is, who is this lens for? This lens is for anyone who owns a crop sensor camera and want to upgrade from a kit lens or maybe want a very good lens from day one. The image on this lens is amazing and the build quality is pretty good. But if you came from a kit lens, you will notice that this lens is really heavy, weighing at 565 gram. And because of the rubber in the focus ring and the zoom ring, it does attract a lot of dust. Because of the focal length 17 to 50 mm this lens is pretty much an all-round lens. 17 mm is wide enough and also 50 mm should give you enough zoom. And because of the constant f2.8, this lens is great for low light. You can get a nice fast shutter speed while in low light. And you can also get a very nice shallow depth of field at f2.8 as well. The Sigma 17-50 f2.8 is available in a variety of mount like Canon, Nikon, and Sony for $940 New Zealand dollars, and that's around $730 US dollars. And when you shop with pro1digital.co.nz, you will get free international shipping and also a jailweight Sigma warranty. So I would recommend you to check out pro1digital.co.nz for your camera equipment, some video cameras, and also some discounted price, and also some used product as well. You can get some discount on that. Really recommend you to check out the site. The link will be in the description below. I have to give this lens a 9 out of 10 because the image quality is amazing but the build quality is not that good. I don't really like the rubber on the ring because it does attract a lot of dust. The zooming ring is also not that smooth, it's quite heavy so it's not really that good for video. The focus ring is too short in my opinion, you can focus really fast but it's not really that precise. And lastly, if you just got into the DSLR world, or in this case SLT, you should spend more money on the glass on the lens because that's what gives you the quality, not the body of the camera. And if you ask me what I recommend this lens for you guys, the answer is yes, this lens is amazing for the price. But if you want the really best quality from your camera, I would recommend you to go for prime lenses like the 50mm f1.8. That's a gorgeous lens for the price. Very beautiful, very nice shallow depth of feel. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching this long video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Please rate this video a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions. And please subscribe for more reviews.